incentive to address accessible or universal design. So what did it mean to have an inaccessible website? It means that people who are blind or have specific learning disabilities cannot use their screen reading software that audibly reads the web page out loud. But it also means that an inaccessible website can be a barrier for people without disabilities, people with busy eyes, or if they're in a dark room, or even if they have slow modem. This is because the same features that enable screen reading software to operate enable web content to be downloaded quickly uh, with slow modem. It also maximizes search engine capabilities, among the many other benefits. I don't have time to show uh, uh, a screen reader resource today, but I'd like to refer you to a six minute video clip on that. I don't have much time left given the, the uh, situation, but I was going to discuss with you the problem of, of what we do with images on a website and how it affects persons with uh, visual disabilities and what the solutions were. Uh, which have been found in uh, the W3C efforts. I also was going to discuss the, an inaccessible web issue that uh, where people with mobility disabilities need access to the keyboard or people who have busy hands and what the solutions were for that. I was also going to discuss the fact that people are now using speech technology input and they need to be able to use the web and people with low vision, and how we can implement it. Now, I must comment that my slides discuss WCAG 1.0, and we have an expert from the W3C today who will be able to refer to uh, the efforts underway now with WCAG 2.0. And another feature that I feel very important is uh, regarding accessibility to audio uh, for people who are deaf and people who can't hear in a noisy room and the solutions that are available for that. I'll end with a resource that I referred to earlier on the global survey. Uh, you may be interested, this is the second book I've written. Uh, it's co-authored on accessible web, web standards, web, uh, web accessibility, web standards, and regulatory compliance. It was published in 2006, and it contains the best tools in accessible web design by leading experts around the world and was selected for a Japanese translation by the chair of the Japanese Industrial Standards uh, Working Committee for Web Accessibility. And we now have discussions underway to produce a Serbian translation. I want to thank you very much. My contact information is available at uh, cynthia.wadell at icdri.org. And you're certainly invited to visit our website. Uh, our mission at the International Center for Disability Resources is to collect best practice around the world uh, for people with disabilities. Thank you. For a bit of these technical problems, uh, as you know, this uh, session has been a bit unplanned. Um, but I promise I will catch up on time uh, because uh, the great speakers uh, before me uh, already covered a lot of uh, what I initially wanted to cover. Um, so, um, I wanted to talk about the importance of the uh, web accessibility and I think this was really highlighted by um, uh, very good examples um, in China and uh, worldwide. Um, I maybe just want to take the opportunity to introduce W3C because many people don't know uh, the acronym, don't know what this means. AI is another acronym that you might hear. It's one of the departments of W3C called the domain and it deals with making the web accessible for people with disabilities. So we make sure that the W3C technologies, such as HTML and XML and so on, have accessibility built into them. Because if the core technologies do not support accessibility, the web developers will not be able to provide accessibility. And we also provide guidelines uh, for developers to tell them how to make uh, websites accessible. And those were mentioned in uh, the presentations before. We've also heard uh, the importance of the web and how it offers unprecedented opportunities for people with disabilities and for others. Um, um, we talked about the importance of it for news and information and commerce and education and so on. So I will not go into that into too much detail now. 
Um, and um, we also talked about the definition of web accessibility, that it can be perceived, uh, operated, understood, and that it's robust. Uh, we also talked about the different types of disabilities that are impacted uh, by, by um, accessibility. Um, so it's not only about blind people or deaf people or people with physical disabilities. It's really about combinations of different kinds of disabilities. The website and book your um, flight itinerary or something. Um, so think about different situations. What if you were not able to see the screen or hear the warning message? Uh, those kind of things. Uh, those are all kind of barriers that can face people with disabilities. Um, and if we really want to have a truly inclusive society, uh, Cynthia did a good job of, of, of mentioning the UN Convention, uh, which really is, is um, impressive in the way that it, it really addresses accessibility from a human rights perspective. It's not a nice thing to do, uh, but it's really a human right, um, something uh, that, that is necessary. Um, um, Cynthia also mentioned some of the worldwide activities. In Europe, for example, there have been several directives. Uh, one just launched uh, at the Vienna Ministerial Conference uh, two days ago, uh, where Mr. Khan was also present. And, um, and um, there's a Riga declaration where the European countries have committed themselves to make the public websites accessible by 2010, and several other initiatives also worldwide in many countries we saw the wonderful example of uh, China and how they are also um, addressing this um, important issue. But beyond the equal access and the importance of accessibility as, as a human right and, 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 and as a right to access information, I maybe also want to highlight a different aspect, which is the additional benefits of making websites accessible. Um, and. Um, there was earlier um, mention of Microsoft. Just to take the example of Microsoft, in 2004, they commissioned a study uh, with Forrester Research that looked at um, the accessibility in the Windows operating system. And what they found was that while about 20% of, of people need those accessibility features, usually people with disabilities, they discovered that nearly two-thirds of the people benefit from those accessibility features. In, 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 in accordance with this, uh, they even renamed their accessibility efforts uh, very often to easy of use. You're going to find easy of use rather than accessibility. It comes from the concept that it's not only about access for people with disabilities. It's ease of use for everyone. Think of it as an elevator. I need an elevator to be able to get to the first floor. Otherwise, I'm locked out with my wheelchair. But everybody else benefits from that elevator. It's a quality of life. It's an improvement for everyone. And so this is something that we have to think about as something that accessibility can be something innovative, something that uses the latest technologies, text-to-speech, speech-to-text. Uh, all those technologies that are being used by people with disabilities benefit everybody. We also need to look at it from a broader perspective of the aging community, for example. World demographics are showing that we're all getting older. And as that we grow older, we are developing age-related symptoms. We're seeing less well, we're hearing less well, we're remembering less well. So sooner or later, this is impacting all of us. So it's not the them and us kind of approach. It's really an inclusive society. And it's, 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 it's a quality that will benefit everyone. And again, to go ahead, not only look at the people's side, but technological improvements. If you make your, mobile, uh, if you make your website accessible, it also uh, is easier to use on your mobile web. For example, uh, it doesn't matter if I cannot see the screen uh, because I have low vision or because the screen is so small on my cell phone display. It's basically the same requirement in the end effect. There are situational limitations. For example, if I have a eye surgery, uh, if I break my arm, uh, uh, if I forget my glasses. There are also social or economical limitations. 
Not everybody can afford to buy the latest technology or to have broadband access. This is something that is very important, rural access. So accessibility is a major benefit, and uh, this is maybe really the key message of my presentation, the contribution that maybe I can add to the previous presenters. We talked about accessibility standards, and uh, the good news is that accessibility standards exist for many areas. Today we're talking specifically about web accessibility and uh, the way guidelines are recognized worldwide as um, the standard for accessibility. Uh, in, in, in most countries, um, they are referred to, um, sometimes unfortunately um, um, also fragmented, so variations of the standard are being produced. So the way that we develop W3C standards is in a multi-stakeholder process, in an open environment, and W3C standards are provided royalty free, which is why the web was so successful. It's because anybody can download HTML and implement the browser or something. And the same with the way guidelines. They are available as open standards and royalty-free standards. Um, this is a bit of a technical slide. I'm not sure if we have time um, to go into it. It just shows um, the, the, how, how the um, different standards work together. So at the bottom of the slide, you have the core technical standards of the web. Um, like HTML, X, uh, XML, CSS, and so on. And on top of these are the accessibility guidelines that address the content, that also address the authoring tools and the user agents, which are the browsers and the media players. By the way, um, this slide set is HTML and it's uh, going to be published online. So uh, if you want to look at it later, um, I, I, it's going to be made available on the web. Um, so the, the key aspects really for implementing accessibility, um, as I've been saying, they, that the standards exist, um, what it really needs is to um, adopt those standards. That's the first step to say, OK, we're going to adopt the standard. We're going to uh, make a policy uh, to, 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 to implement accessibility. Um, also, awareness raising is something that is very important. Um, many people don't know about the need or don't understand what the needs are. Um, so training is important. Many developers don't know how to implement an accessible website. This is really the main problem. Um, and also, I want to highlight the importance of authoring tools. In order to make a website accessible, um, you need to have tools that will help you make this uh, website accessible. And uh, China also showed this example of software, uh, web software. And finally, of course, promoting assistive technologies, which are the technologies that people with disabilities use um, sometimes to access uh, the web. Um, I would also like to take this opportunity, uh, uh, and, and I'm proud to um, announce that the second version of the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, uh, which is really a new milestone in the era of web accessibility, uh, is expected to be published this December. So we're expecting it very soon. Um, it, it really goes beyond the alt attribute, but it looks at, at Web 2.0 and web applications, user-generated content, all those aspects. How can we make those accessible? Um, and again, um, the solution is going to be available very soon. Um, and so uh, we hope that this will be a convergence target for many um, um, policies and many countries to look towards. Um, Last but not least, before ending, I'd like to mention uh, the opportunity of translations. At W3C, we have uh, um, um, different translation possibilities, uh, the so-called voluntary translations or the authorized translations. And so I hope that many countries will make use of this uh, opportunity and make authorized, so normative translations of those standards in their own um, um, language or cultural um, um, regional translations um, um, and, and make use of those existing standards and deploy them in their countries. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Abuzer. Something like that. You said the world is a small, it's, a, it's truly a global village. Where there, there were some very important policy decisions where 
Unfortunately, some of the people who were supposed to be here from Council of uh, Europe uh, were unable to come. But they have shared, if you look at your uh, email, probably you will find an attachment of uh, what was uh, decided. And that part has been circulated to the uh, people of this particular community that has interest in uh, accessibility of internet to people with disabilities. Uh, we did say that there they will try to um, make this session a little more interactive than two minutes that is often left at the end of a session. So here is your opportunity now. Share your experiences. Um, ask questions of the three panelists. Uh, uh, the, that is the difficult questions they will deal with. And if you have an easy one, I'll be happy to answer. Uh, <laughs> But yes, please, at the back. Yeah. Just wait for the microphone, please. Yeah. Just one minute, please, let the microphone reach you. And uh, also, before you make your comments or observations, please introduce yourself so that people can hear you. I am G.V. Raghunathan. Mm -hmm. I am from uh, Department of Information Technology. Mm -hmm. I have a small question, and I would like to know a little more information from Information Society of China. Uh, the, you know, about uh, 25 million is the disabled people in the category of mental as well as multiple disabilities. What are the specific experiences that Internet Society of China has had with reference to addressing the issues of accessibility, of Internet accessibility to information with reference to this population? Because this is a very critical uh, population and their problems are very unique. Thank you. Champion. Uh, but any other, anybody else who wants to ask? Yes, yes please. please. Go ahead. Yeah. My name is Deirdre, Will De sorry, Deirdre Williams, and I come from the Caribbean island of St. Lucia, mm -hmm. courtesy of the Diplo Foundation and the ITU. Mm -hmm. I'm very happy to be here. I can't think about 186 million people, but I've come to this session for one person. Her name is Susan, and she is completely disabled. She cannot move, she cannot speak. Her only way of communicating with the world is by using her eyes. We found her an eye mouse, and this she is a very highly intelligent woman. She's an international expert on pediatric AIDS. And this is how she speaks. I am glad that Shadi told us about the, 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 the drip down benefits of things that are done for disabled people. But Susan's disability is so great that not very many people that there isn't the money and there isn't the time. If you're blind, if you're in a wheelchair, that's perhaps not so bad. I came, I hope, that there are people in this room who know things about technology, I'm sorry, I'm being very stupid, who know things about technology that will help her. I'm here, you know things that I don't know, if you can, please help. It's an individual. It's a person with the same desire for dignity as any one of us have. And that's why this issue is, apart from being a technology issue, is an emotional issue as well. Please. Yeah. So thank you very much. I. Um, um, for this intervention, this this is really important, and as uh, Mr. Khan is saying, it really personalizes uh, the, the issue. Um, and um, in the slides, I also mentioned as one of the most important things uh, to, to do, uh, which I believe um, 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 the the gentleman from from China as well mentioned, is the promotion of ex assistive technologies. Uh, this is really what it means: the assistive technologies. Um, yes, I was speaking from, from uh, 10,000 feet above and, and displaying um, what, what the situation is, but when it comes down to a person, 
yes, people need specially fitted solutions. Even wheelchairs sometimes need to be specially fitted um, and, and, and they become very expensive solutions, very difficult to afford. Um, and, and so the promotion of assistive technologies, which then again benefits everyone, uh, because those are the latest technologies. This is where innovation is, because those technologies that help people with disabilities sooner or later benefit everyone as well. Um, so I, I would be happy to talk with you after this session and um, um, dig up some of my uh, uh, address book, uh, some of the contacts of assistive technology producers. Um, I'm, I'm more aware of some of them in Europe that may be able to, to, to help, um, help you um, with, with specific software. We do not produce software, uh, but the, the, uh, the, the, the standards. Please, yes, go ahead. Just one, 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 one. I just want the, this to be become really like a television panel so that, you know, people get involved in it. Yes, go ahead, please. Um, I'm Gitanjali. I work with the UN Solution Exchange. We are an online uh, knowledge sharing uh, platform. And Rajin and I deal with issues uh, uh, to do with ICT for development. And uh, ma'am, we recently had a discussion on eye tracking software. So I can uh, forward that to you and I can put you in touch with professors in India who are actually researching on this subject and they have developed some software. So I can put you in touch with them. I would need your email. Uh, then um, the first speaker mentioned that in 2007 uh, China adopted uh, website accessibility standards. Is it available online? Like, can I access it online and read it? Is it a law? Is it a uh, it, it is standard. It's a standard. Yeah, uh, standard yeah. technical requirements. I, I think uh, it's av available online. So, okay, uh, so the, but, but uh, unfortunately, I, I don't know if they have uh, the English version or not. Not yet? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, maybe, okay. maybe, 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 yeah. uh, but uh, I think uh, I ask uh, uh, our expert on the draft of this uh, uh, standard. Okay, because. Is, uh, uh, Madame Hu, Madame Hu, explain to you. Okay. Yeah, please, can you pass on the microphone to Madame Hu? Uh, I, I work in research. Uh, I work in. Can you China. bring the microphone closer to you, please? Yeah. Is it work? I work in yeah. China Academy of Telecommunication Research. This year, we make a information accessibility standard. This standard was issued in March this year and have been printed. Pr uh, printed, yes. Is it um, in English? That's the question. Is it available in the language that she no, can understand? No, it's in Chinese. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Now yes. the challenge is the, for you to learn Chinese. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, as our work uh, in developing um, this kind of standard later than advanced country, so we really study a lot from foreign, uh, foreign country. Uh, besides, we must uh, consider the problems of all our Chinese ourselves. So, the main principle of this standard is consistent with W3C. But we also add some new rules. For example, Chinese characters are hyperglyphical. Uh, some, there are some characters seldom used, very seldom used. And only a, pe a few people know what it means. So, we make it as a rule in Chinese standard. Whenever seldom used character appear in the web page, a note must be provided to explain what it means. So that's our work. In the future, uh, and, and uh, after we make this standard, we join the activity which is held by ISC. Uh, the ISC um, re rebuilt uh, eight websites into uh, an ac accessible website and make all Chinese, including um, disabled Chinese, 
Mm -hmm. uh, people with disabilities mm -hmm. all share the same experience of participating the Olympic in the web. We have mm -hmm. all the same experience. Mm -hmm. And besides, uh, I, we will, uh, under the leading of CCSA, Chinese China um, Communication Standard Association, um, to develop new standard. The CCSA has provided a framework of information accessibility. The framework is um, will uh, develop standard in three directions. Help disabled people, help indigent people, and help all people sit here, help us. We all have information accessibility. So if uh, I think um, it will be much helpful uh, if, uh, if the president of IIC and the president of CCSA gives us some information about what has been done in China. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, it has to be converted and published in English. Uh, we, as Ikfa University Research Center, uh, we offer ourselves, uh, you know, we extend our... Sorry, which university is it? It's Ikfa University. Uh, I am Professor Ake Jain from uh, Ikfa Research Center. Mm -hmm. We are into research and publication activity in Big Where Green. is it located? Can it's in, it based in Hyderabad. Mm -hmm. So those who are interested in uh, that, uh, I would like to really, uh, you know, uh, extend my, uh, our cooperation from Ikfa side. To, to, to take those uh, uh, things work and publish that in English language. Very good. Thank, Thank you for Thanks your a lot. offer. Thank you. Please. For JTC1 Web Accessibility, mm -hmm. we're looking at all the technical standards in place around the world that touch uh, accessibility. Uh, in the area of audiovisual and multimedia, uh, there's pieces of it, uh, including things like uh, digital TV if you, and uh, uh, other, other forms of communication because of this convergence. It, we're dealing with this problem of conversion. Uh, so with the JTC, I would refer you to the JTC1 uh, effort and take a look at the um, uh, global survey and we'll know where we are because the question I had raised early was what was the state of standards around the world in these areas and we're only mapping it now. For, for, for the web, uh, which I think y your question was maybe more specific towards the web, um, the um, NCAM, the National, um, um, help me with the acronym? National Center for Accessible Media is an excellent uh, organization uh, under the auspices of WGBH or BGH in, uh, in the United States. And I had a, a solution on my slide regarding um, uh, Magpie, which is a software they had developed uh, for enable uh, captioning of, of multimedia. But um, they, they, they are, are also working yeah. on accessibility with radio and some other issues. But it's an e excellent uh, resource. Um, yes, please, gentlemen, right in the front row. Uh, I'm Rajan Varada and Fong. We are at the moment putting together a resource group for formulating a framework policy recommendations to the government of India. This discussion has been initiated by Mr. Dipenda Minocha, who is also here. <coughs> I would like him also to say a few words, but I'm really thrilled to be here today because the kind of inputs I can carry with me from here and put it into the policy document as a, re a recommendation to the government of India uh, is what we came here for. Uh, if anybody from government of India, especially in the technology, and uh, I think IT is here, I would ask them to join this forum and add value to that. Thank you. Thank you for your question. The um, liaison um, uh, person, so he might also um, um, mention, mention this workshop as well. Yeah. Yeah, now tomorrow, I invite the Telecommunication Union also has a workshop on internet accessibility. There's a number of presentations. Uh, my presentation will be focusing on uh, the UN Convention and how it is impacting, going to impact the internet. Um, I'll that was a that free in. ad? Free <laughs> ads there for tomorrow. Uh, so we clone yourself. Mr. Minocha, at the back, please. Yeah. 
think. The response, uh, adding to a response to the question from uh, Rahul also, when he asked for the standards being developed for multimedia, and multimedia, of course, as the panelists have suggested, means much more than uh, one single thing now. Uh, audio capt uh, the captioning, of course, becomes one part of it, but standards like uh, SMIL from W3 itself, uh, and uh, uh, SMIL3 being uh, already being released as one of the release uh, candidates from W3, uh, is a very strong candidate for multimedia integration uh, language. And uh, DAISY, of course, fits in as a standard uh, which uses a lot of W3C uh, prescribed standards in it for multimedia uh, synchronization and uh, structured uh, presentation of the content uh, for that purpose. Uh, uh, of course, I mean tomorrow we have at 9 o'clock in room 6 the uh, DCAD workshop specifically on the issue of uh, the internet, uh, the main theme, but we talk about 10% of the target that we have discussed in the morning today, the 10% of the population, how to reach uh, and how to make the internet more useful for persons with disabilities. So this is going to be uh, happening tomorrow at 9 a.m. till 10.30. Uh, thank you, Mr. Minacho, thank you. And currently, I'm researching the lack of uh, website adoption particularly with Canadian websites. And some of my preliminary findings are that it's important the standards have, were a great step, but then the implementation of the standards is difficult. Uh, for instance, it's easy to say don't use tables for layout. It's very hard. Uh, we spent days and days trying to come up with a CSS solution that, to do that. Uh, I didn't find a lot of educational material or s specifics on how to do that. So I feel that it, you know, the next step that is really needed is the specifics of how to actually achieve those standards. And I know up until recently, even the, the browsers didn't always support all these standards. So it's a, it's a complicated issue. And I think education, as, as was acknowledged by the speakers, is important and training. I would love to see it if the software, for instance, Dreamweaver is one of the biggest in North America, doesn't really fully support accessibility beyond like alt tags or something like that. So that would help, but what I would like to see is more educational material and training. And if you ha anyone had some specifics on, on what type of training could be done to make this issue more of a reality in the field. Thank you for that comment. You, you know, we often talk about the standards and the, the technology as a solution. But uh, we also realize at the same time, technology is ahead of human beings' capacity to use it. And that's where you know, the, the question of generating useful content, because without content, you may have accessibility, f so, so what, really? You, know, you may have standards that allows people to access, but so what if people do not have the information that they can access and the information that will address their needs? So I think it is a equally, it, it has to be a holistic solution. It's not just the technology, it's not the question of policy, it's not the question of capacity building. I th unless it is, you know, a, a, an integrated whole, a package deal, uh, it, its application will remain marginal, and especially for people who are marginalized to begin with. Uh, 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 yes, go ahead. Uh, will be more easily provided uh, through uh, WCAG 2. Yes, please go ahead. Yes, uh, could explain why I'm here for that. Um, and it's picking up on the holistic view that you were just proponing, and also something you were saying, Shadi, in terms of um, it's benefiting a very large proportion of uh, users on the internet when some of these technologies are exploited. And what we've done in Australia, and this is quite literally hot off the presses, is taken a rather radical approach. We've got since the 1st of May this year with our new government, all of the consumer advocacy, disability and non-disability sector groups within country together. And we have just finished creating and we have our interim funding and start-up seed capital funding for a new national peak body, which is simply dealing with the converged environment of consumers in communication. And 
we're going to be taking, it's an exploration, it's an experiment, but I think it could be very interesting to look at how with a, a new peak body of peak bodies, which simply sees all access and ability issues on a level playing field, what may come out of it. And I'm very keen to share and learn and, and be available from the Australian perspective. And I do need to apologise, coming from ICANN, the Australian group is called ACAN, the Australian <laughs> Communication Consumer Action Network. So if I get confused with my I's and my A's, you'll just have to take my apology in advance. <laughs> well, we understand that you tense or uh, audio contents, um, including text and uh, other elements in synchronization. Um, uh, if you like to more uh, know more about uh, the uh, daily standard uh, development, uh, please visit. Um, www.daisy, just like daisy as flower, and uh, dot .org. So then um, we are aiming at a um, new uh, development of a paradigm which um, will uh, accommodate literally everybody in the society to share information and communication. Thank you. Interesting and interactive session. Thanks largely to your very active participation from the audience. And please uh, join me in giving big hand to our three panelists who have really shared their experience. <laughs> and I hope that it's not, we, of course, we take from the point of view that we are most familiar with and that we have expertise in. But as I said, it is really, truly an approach uh, from advocacy to policy making to uh, legislative laws to uh, practical solutions, technical solutions, content generation, without which, frankly, all of this will be meaningless if people do not have the right content and available to them in the language that they can understand. And with, the, with, with that, we close this session. Thank you very much for your participation. Thank you very much.